Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to build this percussion box drum, or better known as a cajon. The cajon is a fantastic little drum that is a thin wood face, a solid wood body with the sound hole into the back of it that helps to carry out the rich bass sound of it. It has a snare inside. The cajon is getting really popular with folk music and smaller gigs to where you can't pack in a full drum set or a lot of equipment. So I'm going to show you how to build this step by step. So stay tuned. So the weather is so nice out here today, I decided to move some of the tools out here and do some of the cutting. I'm going to start with this board I picked up at Home Depot. It is a laminated up piece of pine, or possibly fir. I'll double check and put it in the description below. But it's supposed to be a 24 by 48. It is 48, but on this part it's actually only a 23 and a quarter. That'll be okay. We're just going to want to make sure that we split it exactly in the middle. Now, when you split that wood, on this one I'm cutting it at 11 and 5 8 inches. And as you could hear in the background, my dog Delta was just giving me all kinds of instructions. Cutting the next pieces are going to be 18 inches long. These are the two side pieces. I'm going to now come back and mark off 12 inches and cut off two top and a bottom 12 inches wide. Now I want to set a groove in these that's going to be the same width as the lumber and then leaving about a just maybe as much as a quarter of an inch of wood left over. Now you're going to groove this out, and I'm going to actually use the table saw and move it over until I literally have cut away this 5 eighths of an edge. But I'm going to do this on three sides of the top, leaving the front open. And I'll do the exact same to the bottom. Now on the two side pieces, I'm going to do the same thing, but only on one edge to the back. Okay, now I picked up some of this Luan, or it's a called a door skin, and it's not a bad looking product. And I could probably use it for some other things, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to the size I need. Now on this, I just did a rough cut because I'm going to want to trim this down later on to fit the face. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the hole in the back. Now I'm coming down about 8 inches and then marking it off and centering it and cutting about a 4 inch hole into this. I'm going to use a drill as a pilot hole and come back with a jigsaw and just cut my circle out. Now I have a sweet little tool that I ordered that's a spindle sander, but it's a portable one, and I love this. I'll put a link up into the top and in the description down below on a review of this. Okay, so we're going to end up with the two sides, the back, the top, and the bottom together. And then on top of that, we're going to do what's called the tapa. And that's been cut. It's still oversized, so we'll have to rough that in, but I, I don't want to do that until we have that put into place. Also, I cut four one by a quarter inch um, boards that will sit inside of each of these to... Um, help support it and keep all of the connections glued on the inside of this. Making sure that I put enough glue here, 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 and here. 
glue is something that can get squished out, can be pushed in, and uh, you don't ever really want to scrimp on glue. You can wipe off the excess at any time. So, like on this, because I want that to fit in, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to glue, put a bead up here too. Like that. Put these two together like that and let them sit for just a second. I'm going to run a bead up this one also. This is also I want these two to set in and catch hold. Now can I get a twelve inch clamp on this? Yes I can. So this is cool. I'm going to put a, now I'm going to do the same thing with this part that's going to come up here. So I'm going to get these two sides glued up. I'm going to make sure I put enough glue. Underneath, so it's pressed, putting the pressure where we want. I think that's going to work. Now let's do it on the tops. mention you can this, never have too many clamps. That's going to help. So I need to flip this over now. And we're going to put clamps up here now. starts oozing out on these sides, but that's good. That means we're making good contact and I think we're going to be in good shape. I'm going to cut and drill holes in these wood blocks and put four holes in each, two for each side. And this will help support the inside or the, the corners of the box. setting these in and then like I say you just come in and set some grabber screws in there to help get a hold of it and it seems to work just fine. Now that I've let that stay overnight, come in the morning, we'll take these clamps off. 
I'm going to speed this up because it takes a few minutes to remove this many clamps. That's good and heavy. Okay, we're going to go ahead and install the face on here and it's going to be a little bit tight so I'm going to mark that edge a little bit along this side and then just using a sander but you could use a saw a sander or whatever you have to just trim or smooth that edge down it was just not very much at all that needed to be moved so yeah that's gonna fit fine so using the same method I did before I'm gonna lay a good heavy bead of glue around all the sides now a lot of times people will use a brush to brush this down that probably works better but I have no problem with just running my finger around that and uh, smoothing it in and smearing that into all surfaces as well. I'll get it pushed down in there it's a good tight fit. The glue is now kind of oozing out from what I had, but no, I can't let it go at that. I've got to throw on at least as many clamps as I can dig up. Okay, well, maybe I went overkill a little bit on the clamps for the face, but I'll let them set up overnight. Okay, we're going to start taking the clamps off this and see what we got. I'll speed this process up again. This is going to look good. We'll do a little bit of belt sanding to smooth it out. I'm going to come back with an orbital to do a little more finish work and I'm also going to round those corners and then do some hand sanding with 220. I am going to use some Varathane triple thick polyurethane. It's a water base. It's really pretty thick. I've sanded this down, I've wiped it down, and I'm ready to lay a coat of this on. This stuff goes on really, really thick. And you can't brush it out too much, you just got to kind of lay a good coat with the grains. Okay, I've put a coat of the uh polyurethane on this and I'm gonna want to put definitely a second coat on there although this is not bad it's got a nice kind of a low sheen to it but I want a, I don't know I think the texture for me I want a smoother feel but I do like the natural wood on this I think that's gonna make a really cool look for adding the top up or the front to this which I'm gonna want to do that in a dark contrast so before I apply a second coat on this, I'm going to move it out of the way. And I've been, I had pre-cut some slices and there was a little warpage, so I've had a, a weighted toolbox sitting on top of it. And I'm going to pick my favorite wood grain of what I like. This might look good although this with the knot might be really pretty too you know you're really kind of unlimited of what you might use but you know I'm thinking I'm thinking I like that let's let's look at using this one and I'm gonna put it face down and I'm gonna put this to the bottom so I'm gonna put this face down and I'm gonna set the cone on top of it. I'm going to use 
the factory edge of the, the Luon or whatever this eighth inch material is, and I'm going to line it along here. I'm going to trace out the rest of this body. And this way I'm cutting it to match the shape as much as I can. Once I have that marked, I'm going to come back with the table saw and get a more precise cut to fit the face of that. I'm going to come back and round those corners, especially on the top, and then do a little block sanding around just to make sure any burrs or splinters are off of it and it's smoothed out. I'm going to line this up and measure off on the top and the sides for where the holes are going to go. I'm going to clamp the face down to it, or the top it down to it, and then I'll come in and mark and drill and countersink. I'm using a combo bit to mark and countersink all the holes. And I'm going to be using some Verithane uh, wood stain in ebony, because I want to pull this down to a dark color. So, I like how the stain goes on and it just really melts down into the wood well and I think this is going to give it really good contrast to the light wood sides. After applying the stain I'm going to let it set up for a few minutes and then I'm going to take a cotton rag and just wipe off the excess and it really pulls the grain back out in it. You could make this as light or dark as you want. I think that's gonna, that's gonna look nice. Now, I'm gonna come back, give the uh, box another light sanding with 220 and a second coat of the polyurethane. This is a water-based polyurethane. Now I'm going to come in and install some little cushion pads for the bottom of it to sit on so you're not scuffing up the bottom of the box. And I'm going to come in an inch and a quarter both directions on all four sides, pre-drill the holes, and then I'll come back and install these little rubber feet. Okay, that's ready to go and set it to the side. Okay, while I'm waiting for the top out or the face to kind of set up, I'm going to start on the snare section. The snare is going to sit in here and it'll sit on the board, will sit on an angle. I'm going to take the snare and cut it to where they protrude out and the face sets up against it. And I'm going to take this snare and I'm going to cut it in in half. This is actually a snare that's made for a snare drum so it's a one piece so using a pair of side cutters and doing about two of the, the wires at a time snip through it. Now I'm gonna fit the board to set inside and I want it to sit on an angle so I'm gonna take two smaller boards and set those in and mark those so that I now have the angle that I want. And I'm going to pre-drill my holes and also the little side blocks as well because those will be screwed in to the inside of the cajon box to hold the snare into place. Go 
ahead and now install the snare strings or wires. Now you could do this to where you could make this actually adjustable, but I'm going to set this one up as a as a lockdown system. This is roughly six and a half. This is going to come up just a tad. And I'll go ahead and then once I have that, I'll screw those down into place into the sides. That's what I want right there. Okay, so now I'm excited because now I think we're ready to put the cone together. So I'm going to set this out of the way for a second and put an old towel down here so that we can set the cajon down. And you can see how the, the springs are working on this. Okay, so we're going to start setting this all in place and set the head on there and I'm going to be using some number eight uh, these are not brass screws but they have a anodizing that is kind of a brass color and I think that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking for fit up with the first hole set this in I'm not going to overly tighten that, and I think I'm going to go around to try to consistently set this down. So, once again, line that up with the hole. Now, I looked at a lot of other cajon drum videos and even went to a big store and looked at one of the cajones and I just basically copied the arrangements of the placement of the uh, screws on these. Well, this is interesting. I'm going to do a little hand tightening around this but, but I'm thinking I like that snare sound you could probably come in and even adjust that more, but I'm really, I think this is pretty cool. Let's go try it out. One, two, three, four. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this video. I really enjoyed building this drum. If you have any suggestions or comments, please put them in the comment section down below and I'll try to get back with you. Consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you soon.